This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. To Poverty by Lizzie M. Holmes Poverty, miserable curse of the pleachious earth, what horrors are conjured at your name. Shameful shadow, falling like a pall over the bright glow civilization, would boastfully send forth. You darken every dream of beauty and purity that mortal dares to dwell upon. You drive him to despair. You wound him to the prison door. You call forth the evil within to fight your encroachments. And you crush to earth his aspirations, his genius. Needless, hideous phantom that you are. Thing created, not of nature, but of men. What mystical words will banish you forever? Has the whole race lost the key to your existence? Is there no presto change in the vocabulary of suffering humanity that will change you into something less like the phantasma of black art? You have no excuse for being. You push your ugly shadow around under the caves of palaces, beneath the richest storehouses and through the greatest wealthiest streets with the audacity of Satan. You go and brood like a great bird of prey over the green fertile fields of the farmer. You sit like a great green specter on the heart of the man who digs more wealth than no hundred like him can use. You are the hated but familiar acquaintance of desolate, tired, work-worn women. And you make little friends. Idiots and automata of the children who should be frisking and laughing all day in the glad sunshine. You are the most brazen-faced curse the world knows, for you act as though we wanted you and there is no such thing as proceeding without you. You have no business here. Nature planned her arrangements with the express purpose of keeping you out of her domains. Man is strong enough to crush your wicked shadow into atoms if he could grasp you. But you see that he does not do that. You are the evil genius called upon by many methods and in so many different shapes that neither you nor your conjurers can be seized in a firm, sure grip. You will not assume a definite form, nor tell what master summoned you, and thus you elude while you haunt and torture us all. Where you cannot sleep, you send a dim, terrible resemblance of yourself, a specter that can go where it will, in the palace, in the quiet home, in the counting rooms where gold is heaped. That can drive men to deeds even you cannot evoke. That can crush love, affection, beauty, and truth from the soul of man. It is the fear of you. We spend so much time studying you, you monster. We puzzle over the problem of where you came from, and how you came, and how we can annihilate you, as we never puzzle over our school day problems. We devote a great deal of thought and learning to you. We analyze, pick you to pieces, turn you over and over. And some of us, seeing how inevitable you are, try to make out you are not so hideous after all. Probably a blessing in disguise. Always for somebody else, however, never for ourselves. No individual ever gave you a welcome for himself. Oh, you are an important monster. You get noticed enough. And that with your imprudence is what you get. Some of us have an idea of how you sneak into the world and how it is you keep your grip here so well. And we will go on until we find a way to kill you. Some believe they can conquer you in their own cases. But they only drive you away from themselves. You still exist and you torment other poor wretches all the more for exempting the few. Nothing but your other destruction will answer. We will not be satisfied by your temporary banishment. We must have your execution. We have designs on you. Wait until we not know you better, heavens. We know you but too well now. But until we learn all your weak points and what pulls the strings which direct your baleful creepings. When more of mankind are awakened, your doom is sealed. We are very philosophical about you. We who have studied you. We can discuss you in the abstract with great composure, but the miserable little details of everyday life where you creep about and pinch and annoy and distract us, ah, uh, there you have left us yet. 
The mean way you have of crowding calculations of the grocer's bill and the contents of one's slim purse between the lines of one's best literary effort, of mixing up plans, of making our closes last through another season with the constructive elements of an elaborate essay, of tearing up the halo which a feebly growing renown is building up about one's commonplaces. Here is where your power over us never wanes. I used to imagine as a child a king always sitting in state on his throne with a crown on his head and a scepter in his hand. And I could not imagine him in any other situation. I think most people weave about the personality of an author a sort of halo of glory or blessedness. Imagine him or her sitting in an elegant rosewood desk in fine composure, ready at a moment's notice to receive visitors and be able to talk as well as they write. But you, you miserable desecrated of all beautiful fancies, you tear away the halo with fiendish laughter. You will show him up to some admiring visitor splitting woods at the back door in a ragged coat or sifting ashes, the dustiest, shabbiest, forlornest objects in the world. And your hateful, unbanishable ghost stalking at his side makes him forget his own powers and ability and to talk like an idiot. To a woman, your own shadow is heavier and darker. She may succeed in weaving many street fancies about her personality in others' minds, but when you, you gull, hover over her, let them come closer and she is found to be only a plain, shabby, stabbering woman, scrubbing the floor as stupidly as your stupidest victim. Not always do you cause the suffering where you do your worst work. Your victims starve and freeze to death, they pine in prisons and die in gutters. But often they feel no more exquisite pangs of pain than do those who rendered sensitive by the civilization which pretends it cannot do without you are made to feel by your mortified, ceaseless presence. No, you have no acceptable excuse for crowding among us uninvited. The world is bounteous, labor is generous, crying aloud for opportunity. Yet here you come, tagging along after wealth as though you were its shadow. Though, of course, if wealth must be piled in enormous heaps, it will cast just such hideous shadows. But you are not wanted. And when enough of us realize that you do not belong here, and that even wealth does not want you, remember, out you go. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.